Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you a simple way of bleeding your Shimano Rode hydraulic brakes. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. So the first thing you'll need is a spray bottle, like this. Obviously they're available in many different shapes, sizes, etc. As long as you can remove the top off it like that, as you can see. And then you've got the plastic tube coming out the bottom. Now, you want it so this plastic tube here will accept a piece of clear hose, vacuum hose, like that. It's the same size as you get with your normal bleed kits. It's about 3mm internal diameter piece of hose, so you can just buy this cheaply online if you haven't already got any, and that will fit over there like that so it's a snug fit on there that's what you need so it fits on there and it's quite tight and you can put just about pull it off like that so once you've got that then and the actual bottle itself then we'll move on to the next step so the next step what you've done you've just got a pair of good scissors and just cut round the neck of the bottle like that so now you've got a holder for fluid and you've got the handle part and the purpose of that is simply when you put that on there like that you've just got something to hold on to like that instead of just having this bit and trying to hold on to it like that so you've still got the actual neck to hold on to your hand then what you do is a piece of tube coming out of here so we don't need it this long so what we'll do is we just snip that off so if you just hold that on there we just cut that down so you can just snip that off with a pair of cutters like that and then get your vacuum hose there and slide that over there so push that on like that, that's a good seal and then it's up to you how long you want this piece of hose but I tend to keep it about three feet in length for the vacuum hose so if you get a piece about three foot in length that just makes it so if you've got the end on the bleed nipple you can still put this down on the floor you know I haven't got to hold on to it all the time so you can just rest that down when you want to it's not dangling, hanging in mid-air, you can just lay it on the floor so you can cut it to whatever length you want really, it's up to you. So here we are at the lever end. Now, it doesn't matter what levers you've got, as long as they're road hydraulic levers, so this could be Durace or Tigra, Tiagra 105, any of the GRX levers. So the first thing you want to do is just pull back your hood, like that then explodes the cover on the top. Now, depending on what levers you've got, this could be a two millimeter hex head or a 2.5. So just be aware of that. And make sure you've got one that fits really well in there because if they've been over tightened, you could round that off quite easily. So if that happens and you're allowed to get it out, then I'll put a link up on the screen for a video on how to get one of those out if you've if the top of it's been stripped out already. So what we'll do is just undo that. Crack that undone. Like that. And then remove that out of there. Be careful when you remove it. Make sure that the O-ring is on there, the rubber O-ring on there. So once you've removed it, you just put it to one side out of the way. So now I've removed the cover, what I'll do is just get a cable tie like that. I'll put it over the lever. And then just keep the hood out of the way. So we just put that over there like that. Just keep that hood back, tucked out of the way while you're working on the, uh, doing the bleed itself. So it just keeps it tucked back like that. And then you want the 
bleed cup with the road adapter on the bottom for the levers. So you just go and screw that in, making sure the O-ring's on there as well. So you just screw that in to there and just literally nip that up. Like that until it stops. Then you can remove the the cap off the top. There's a plunger in the middle there as well. That you just that just pulls out. Obviously that's to shut to stop the fluid. Like that. And you put the plunger back in. So you can remove that as well. Put them to one side. So once we've done that, we'll move on to the next step. So here we are down at the caliper. Now I'm just uh, showing it, demonstrating it on the rear brake caliper because that's the furthest away and it takes the most fluid and it's normally the hardest one to bleed because of the distance from the lever itself. You've got more hose running through the frame that you can't get to if yours is internally rooted hose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed it exactly as it is with the pad still in there and the disc and the wheel in with the disc on it. Now it's up to you if you want to take the back wheel out and put in the temporary disc that just goes in there like that. So as you haven't got the disc in there in your way, it's up to you. But I'm leaving the pads in there because you're not going to get any fluid anywhere near the pads. You've got to be doing something extremely wrong to be getting fluid all over your brake pads. And the other reason is, what you'll find is if you put in the bleed block, if you remove the pads, remove the wheel with the disc rotor, take your pads out and put the bleed block in, what happens is a lot of time you'll bleed the brakes on these particular road brakes, then you'll put the pads back in, put your wheel back in, go to squeeze your lever a few times to test the brake and find out that suddenly your brake lever when you're pulling it goes much further back to the handlebar than it did before. That's why I'm not doing it with the bleed block in there because that's what will happen and many people say well it was, it was the, the brake was lovely when I had the bleed block in there as soon as I took it out it was rubbish. It's because I'm bleeding it like this because this is how you ride it on the road. You don't ride with the bleed block in there. So that's why I'm doing it like this. So it's personal preference. You do it how you want to do it. I'm just showing you like this. For anyone that loses their mind over spilling fluid all over there. When you're just going to put a hose on there. That's all we're doing. So, so it's up to you. So what I'll do first is just remove the bleed cover off of there. A little rubber cover. Stop the dirt. Just take that off and put it to one side and then the spanner on there so I'll just put the spanner on like that you can have a ring spanner you can have an open-ended spanner whichever you've got so you can put that on there like that ready to undo it and then put on your hose on there like that so get that in position like that so that's all we're doing we've got the hose connected to the top, the uh, spray bottle there top so here we are at the lever end now as you can see we've got the mineral oil in the cup like that so we go back down to the caliper end so we're down at the caliper end obviously we've got the hose like I showed connected we've got the bottle top there Make sure your things on the top there that you can set to off and on. So does it stop the fluid or the spray setting? Make sure it's on the spray setting. And then you've got your other half of the bottle there. Ready? So what we do is we just crack that undone. Like that. You might have to undo it. Like that enough so the fluid, you see a bit of fluid come out. As you can see there, you see that on the camera or not. And then if we squirt the lever like that, 
see there's nothing in the hose all the way. Like I say you've got like three foot of hose on there. So I'll start squeezing it. Don't know if you can see that or not. So it's pulling the as I'm squeezing it, it creates a vacuum. It's just pulling the fluid through the hose. You can see that? So as it gets, you just keep squeezing it and it's going round. Just keep pumping it. You see that there? I'm just put all I'm doing is pumping the trigger. You see it? So keep your eye on the bleed cup up the lever end, make sure it doesn't run out. So it's just pulling it through like that. And then when it gets near your lever, like that, as it starts to get closer, then you can use your bottle like that. And then obviously you can just screw that into the bottom half of the bottle. So just keep squirting it like that. So if if you was bleeding this and you had dirty fluid in your caliper and it was coming through, then obviously you can squirt it into here and then discard it when you're finished. And then you can start with a fresh cup at the bleed cup end and then put a clean one through. So you just keep squirting that out like that. You see a load of air coming out of it. You can see that on the camera. You see the air bubbles coming down. Loads of air in there. In the system. So you just keep doing that. You can see the air coming through. It's pulling out. So keep your eye on the bleed cup. As soon as that bleed cup goes anywhere near the bottom, stop and then refill the bleed cup. So what I'll do is, we'll stop there a minute and I'll re top up the bleed cup again. So we've topped the bleed cup up again and then we'll carry on with it. You can see some air coming out there. You can see the bubbles coming down like that. So it's normally, obviously you keep doing it until you don't get any more bubbles coming out. And always keep your eye on the bleed cup at all times. Make sure never run the bleed cup down too low. You say a load of air has come out there. It's got rid of it now. So once you're happy there's no air in it, it normally takes a couple of bleed cups just to put through to make sure 100 percent that you got rid of the air. So if you've got nice clean fluid coming through, you can reuse the fluid again from this here. You can keep that fluid to reuse once it's all nice and clean. So you've got that going through nice with no there's no air bubbles coming out now from there. So what I'll do is I'll put um, another half in the bleed cup and just give it a little bit more and then we'll uh, lock it off from there. So once you're happy all the air's come out you can just lock the bleed nipple off. So shut that off. And then nip it up like that and then before you remove the hose off of the bleed nipple just carry on squirting so as the fluid goes into your container squirt it through so as it just gets rid of some of it so there's not so much pressure there's no pressure in the line then Just take that off of there like that and then what you want to do is when you go to remove it what we do is get a piece of cloth like that and then you can remove the pipe off of there you just let let it off slowly like that and you don't get any fluid anywhere at all so once you've done that you can put your cover back over So there's your cover back in place. So obviously you can spin your wheel and just make sure that the brake's working okay. And 
like that. Try and move the wheel by hand. So then you go up to the lever end now. So we've got a little drop of fluid left in there. Like I said, never let the fluid go down past the bottom of the cup. So always leave a little bit in there. Then get your plunger down the middle again and just seat that in. Push that back in there. Just stop the remaining fluid coming out when you unscrew it. Then all you do is just get a piece of cloth there. Just unscrew that. And then when you've unscrewed it, like that, the fluid should be dead level with the top. So as I said, the fluid is level with the top. Don't wipe any of that away. Leave it exactly where it is and then put your cover back over like that. And just literally do that up. Make sure you're not cross threading it or anything. And just nip that down. And as soon as it stops moving, that's it. Don't over tighten it. Just nip that up, and you can, if you've got any fluid there, which you shouldn't have, if you have, just wipe it away like that. Then you're ready just to take off the cable tie off there like that, and then put your hood back in place, clip that in like that. And then you're ready to fill the brake. Like that, that's fully on there. Like that. So, there we have the amount that we put through the system in total. So, obviously, like I said earlier, if yours had never been bled before, the first lot that you put through you can discard of because it could be contaminated. When it comes through nice and clean, you can keep it there and reuse that again in your bleed cup to put it through the system again. So what you do now, you disconnected it. We can just, the remainder is left in the hose there. We can just squirt that through to empty out of the hose. So it's completely empty. When you've emptied it out like that, what you've got to do is turn it off on there like that stop the flow and then what you can do is just get a screw or a bolt in the end of your hose like that and just push it in there just stop it getting any dirt in there uncontaminated and then you've got that there like that so you easy to keep that out of the way it's not covered in oil it's all nice and clean and then you can keep that fluid put it back into your container and use that for another time. So here's everything we used. We've got the mineral oil, we've got cloth, cable toy, bleed cup with the road adapter on it, hex head, your spanner, the bottom half of the your bottle, and we've got the hose and the trigger there. So that's everything we used. So it makes no mess at all. You don't get oil everywhere or anything like that. Easy, simple process to do. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.